Welcome to this webinar on Text Help Read and Write Gold. We'll be looking at version 11, which has some great new features, as well as some enhancements to some of the features available in the older versions. My name's Charlene Cullen, and I'm one of the inclusive technology consultants within the consultancy team. And I'm looking forward to bringing you this new information about this product and some of the great features that have been built into version 11. You can also get further information from us by contacting us on our Facebook page, Spectronics, or through Twitter, and also uh, grab lots of great up-to-date and new information on our blog. We also have our Spectronics online subscription service, which for a fee you can get access to a whole range of video webinars, as well as some free ones too. So during this session, we're going to look at some of the basics to text help read and write gold and demonstrate some of the reading tools, the writing tools and the research and study tools. So there are a number of features um, that will support those areas and read and write gold will work in any Windows application. So it basically sits as a little toolbar that docks on top of whatever you're working on and it can accommodate a wide variety of learning needs. The other thing is that you can um, choose to use the teacher tools, which is for customising learning tasks and allows you to collect data on users. So there's things like a, a spelling log and you can create different users with access to different features. So who would you use it with? Basically, you could use it with anyone. You could use it with students with learning difficulties and dyslexia. It's also being used widely with students who are learning English as a second language and it can be used with students with physical impairments as well as uh, the program is able to basically support all students and I know that as a student myself I would love to have been able to use something like text help um, during my studies. It's also being used by adults in tertiary education settings and workplaces. So it is being used in schools, uh, within post-school education such as universities, also in corrective services and a wide variety of work settings, and then uh, by lots of people at home for either study, recreation or leisure, basically wherever an individual needs to be able to use it. And there is a USB version that can be used in a wide variety of settings so that you can plug it in when you're at home into your computer uh, and then take that USB and plug it in to use it at the library or at work or at school, uh, wherever you're needing to use the program. So the webinar, this will be covering the reading tools, writing tools and research and study tools. And of course, there's a great number of features. So we'll be honing in on a number of those but there's certainly lots to the program and encourage you to uh, look at downloading a demo version to explore it even further. So let's go and take a look at the program right now and we'll start by going into a Word document all about volcanoes and introduce some of the reading features to you. So I've just opened up Read and Write Gold and you can see the toolbar is docked at the top of my page in Microsoft Word. Now I can move the toolbar wherever it suits my visual preference. So to do that I just need to click on the anchor at the end of the toolbar. And what happens is it will undock the toolbar and place it on my screen and then I can move that around to where I prefer. So I'm just going to drag it to the left hand side until it docks itself. And what you'll notice is one of the nice features is it doesn't obscure the toolbar of the application that we're using. So it always pops itself right to the left or right at the top. Now I'll move that back again, undock and then drag it to the top, which is where I prefer to have it. The other thing that we can do is um, see all of the preset toolbar options. So currently we're in one of the presets and I can scroll through those by clicking on the text help button. 
So now I'm on the study skills preset toolbar and I can scroll through. These are all of the features and so you'll notice a little double arrow which means we can see all the non-viewable toolbar buttons. And then I'll scroll through once more to reading features which is where we'll start off. Now to change any of those features that are displayed we can do that in our general options and we can access that through this drop down menu. So here in general options we get a little menu come up and we can see the first tab is display and just underneath that we can see all of the check marks against the features that are currently being displayed on the reading toolbar and then we could add or remove features if we preferred to. Just underneath that we've also got some preferences for how the toolbar looks so we could decide whether we want to have a toolbar with small or large icons and whether they have text or not. So that's just uh, according to individual preference. And then one of the new features in version 11 is that you can change the style of the toolbar itself. So I'm currently on the clear style which is just blue, um, the well the coloured background and then white. So as I click on the drop down we can now see clear style colour coming up and then we've got a professional look which is very similar to previous versions and the icons you would have seen on those toolbars and finally a fun version just looks a little bit more like cartoon like so I'm going to select the clear style color as what I prefer the other thing we can change is the toolbar color so in that drop down menu and this is new in version 11 uh, one of the menu options is changing the toolbar colour. So we've got 13 colours we can change to. So let's try a little bit of purple. And we'll go back to perhaps um, grey. Just have a look. And finally back to my colour which I liked, which is blue. Right, so lots of options for change and, and the look. And then the other thing we can also do is just refreshing people's memories that you could always access in the little drop downs next to each feature uh, an option for watching a video tour. So that's a really helpful option to help you refresh your memory on features, uh, also to give you an idea of what that particular feature is about. So the new thing with those video tours is that instead of just popping up in a little um, pop up now on your screen is it will open up in a browser and you can see it in full screen. Now we're going to start looking at some of the reading tools. So I have the reading uh, preset toolbar up and the first thing that I can do is with any text that is on my screen I can uh, convert that to speech. So let's have a listen. By clicking on play I will hear the voice um, read back the text. A volcano is a mountain that opens downward to a pool of molten rock below the surface of the earth. So you can see what was happening is there that there was highlighting of each word and that can help facilitate word recognition and improved reading ability. What we can do is we could change the colors and the contrast and whether or not we want to have text highlighting on or off and that will depend on the individual's prefer preferences and what their learning needs are. So we can do that within our speech menu and that's just located uh, in that drop down um, arrow next to the play button. If we come down we'll see the speech options menu and this is where we can change our voices so with text help read and write gold um, when we install the Australian version we get the Australian Karen and Lee voices and with version 11 they're now um, nuanced vocalizer voices um, sound slightly crisper than the um, previous versions we might have, might have listened to and here we can also change pitch speed and volume and whether there's pausing for words so there's some great um, options there the other thing is with the highlighting if I come across is I can um, choose whether that highlighting is on or off and what it looks like. So currently we have the yellow background with the blue block highlighting and there's lots of different 
changes you can make there. So when we're using text help to read the text in a document, we can customise the way that that's done using the play drop down menu. I can select to have the text read word by word or a word at a time. Uh, that's particularly useful if a student's uh, fairly comfortable with reading but just needs to highlight a word that they're unfamiliar with and just to, to get that speech feedback to know what it is. Um, we can read by sentence which is what we've had selected and we've got a reading by paragraph. And then if I want it to continue to read each sentence or each paragraph I can select automatically read the next block of text. So I'll show you how that works um, by using the read by sentence option and we'll come down to a different paragraph, this a different sentence this time and press play. Gases and rock shoot up through the opening and spill over or fill the air with lava fragments. Eruptions can cause lateral blasts. La so I'll just stop there and you can see that it was reading the sentence and then it continued to read the sentence uh, because I'd ask it to auto automatically read the next block of text. Now what we'll also notice is when we are trying to read um, things like scientific terms or people's names is we may find that the pronunciation is incorrect and that's something that we can change. So on my project I have um, titled it Shah's Project and I know that that will pronounce it as cha. So if we play that back, Chars. I want to change that because I like my nickname to sound correct. So let's go into the speech options. And in that menu earlier we were looking at, we can see the say like tab. And this is where we can add pronunciations that we would like to change. So I'll put in Shah's, I'll need to put the whole thing in and say it like this. Save. And I'll also just pop in Shah as well. Okay. So now when we play this back, Shah's, we get the correct pronunciation. One of the other reading tools that we can use is called screen reading. So in that drop down menu, I can come down and select use screen reading and what's going to happen is everything that is on my screen uh, it will read what's there, it will read menus uh, wherever the mouse hovers over and what this does is it can assist in learning of how to use the computer and applications because um, often individuals who are using applications might not understand the different menus and things that are there and have difficulty reading them and so that can be read back to you. And so uh, not being able to read the text of menus can often be a real barrier, uh, particularly to people with learning difficulties. So I'll turn that on briefly and you'll see what I mean. Home, Microsoft Word document. So wherever my mouse is, it will tell me what's in the background there. So I can go up to my menus. Home, insert, page layout, Microsoft Word document page references so you can see what I mean I'll turn that off play play or to use screen reading a couple of other features of the reading toolbar are the dictionaries which can support comprehension so we can select a word and then click on dictionary and it will come up with a, a basic definition or in that drop down menu you can choose whether it's advanced um, or using web definitions and so once we're in that definition we can actually uh, use the play button to read back that text. 1. A mountain with a large hole in the top out of which gas and lava sometimes burst or used to burst in the past the volcano erupt. And also we've got an option of uh, clicking on advanced which means that we can go in and get information about opposites or different kinds of volcano uh, and just some more information related to that word that we've clicked on. The other dictionary that we've got access to is the picture, di picture dictionary. So if I again select a word and choose picture dictionary, it comes up with a picture for that image. 
we do need to um, remember that that requires an online connection. One of my favourite features is the speech maker, which is this little icon with the music symbol on it in the toolbar. And what that means is that you can actually create or use the text to um, be transformed into an alternative format, which is an audio file. And that means that a student can listen and study uh, using that audio file um, as an, on their MP3 player, whether that's their iPod Touch, um, whilst they're in the car or driving um, on the bus. Uh, to school or uni. So it's a really cool and unobtrusive way of listening to information that they're learning about. Now to create that file, all we need to do is highlight the text that we would like to make into an audio file. And then we click on Speech Maker. And it pops up a little pop-up with the text that we've just selected. And we just go through a little menu um, wizard. So I click on next and this is where I can set uh, pitch, speed and volume as well as choose the voice that I'd like to um, use for the audio file. I'll stay with those settings and choose next again. And then it's going to create that audio file um, on my computer somewhere. So at the moment it's set to create that on my desktop and the file format as an mp3 which will work really well within iTunes so if you do have that particular um, way of playing files on a, an iPod touch or something then that's great or you've got the option for a WAV file as well which can transfer across a lot of different platforms too and then we're ready to just click create and I created one earlier so I'll show you on my desktop so now we can see my desktop view uh, from Windows Explorer and I can click on that Volcano MP3 file. A volcano is a mountain that opens downward to a pool of molten rock below the surface of the earth. When pressure builds up, and so I can hear back that file, audio file that I've just created from that text on the volcano, which is fantastic. It's nice to have uh, information in, presented in different ways for different uh, diverse learners. And you'll also have noticed that as I was reading back the, that text, uh, wherever there was punctuation markers within the text, it um, created natural pausing uh, for those punctuation markers. And one of the features that we've got within the reading toolbar is called screen masking. This means that uh, for individuals who have visual or perceptual difficulties or just difficulty concentrating on the information that's in front of them, you can screen out parts of the screen uh, just to improve or uh, provide better support for them if they're reading and writing. So within that uh, drop down menu for screen masking, if we click on that and go into the options, here I've got a, a display tab and I can choose the masking type. So you can tint the whole screen or just the window that you're typing in. Uh, if it's related to reading then you might tint everything except the line that you're typing on but it could be for reading as well. And so I'll, I'll select that and then I've got um, an option for choosing the colour that I mask and how strong um, that is whether it's transparent or opaque. Um, so as I click on OK what will happen now when I click in my screen is you can now see that the line where my cursor is is uh, not highlighted and the rest, rest of the screen is masked out. So for typing that can be really useful but also for reading as I move my mouse um, and hover the mouse down it may aid uh, in individuals reading particularly with uh, vision or perceptual difficulties. So that's screen masking. So one of the newer features in Text Help Read and Write Gold version 11 is the support for Chrome. Uh, so I've currently got my Chrome uh, web browser open and within Chrome if you've added an extension, so I'll just show you um, there's a read and write extension that you can install and so you can see that I've got that enabled and Google Chrome. what that means is is that I can um, use uh, my Google Drive and a lot of schools are starting to use Google Drive now for students to be able to create their work and be able to share it in a cloud environment 
um, with others, uh, including the teachers. And so any information that they've created in a Google Doc can um, access those features of the read and write toolbar that we've got above. And so we can have text to speech and the dictionary support, spell checker, word prediction, all of the other things uh, that I'm about to show you are within Google Docs, which is fantastic for the student. And what I'll show you is just how that would work now. If we select, uh, go into our document and press play. There are more than 500 active volcanoes in the world. So there's the text to speech. And then we could double click on a word and access the picture dictionary. And so that's all, I mean, Google Docs is within uh, the Chrome uh, browser. So we're accessing it in slightly a different way. Uh, but similarly to when we were looking at the document in Microsoft Word. So whilst I'm in the Chrome browser, I can actually go to a web page and I've got one about volcanoes open. Uh, and it could be any browser that I'm using. There's a feature on the Read and Write Gold toolbar within the play menu that allows me to read in information on the web. So I'm on this volcano website and I can go into the play menu and choose the menu option for read the web. And what, mean, what that means is, is as I hover my mouse over some text is it'll read back that information with highlighting. The danger area around a volcano covers about a 20 mile radius. And I can play around with how that's read if I want it to continue to read text is in that drop down menu I can choose to automatically read the next block of text and then this time it'll continue to read the sentences until I um, tell it to stop. Fresh volcanic ash made of pulverized rock can be harsh, acidic, gritty, glassy and smelly. The ash can cause damage to the lungs of old. So I'll stop that. So basically students who might be using the web to browse for information on projects or are researching about um, topics that they're learning about can use that um, web reading feature really usefully for themselves. Now one of the other types of documents that we w might want to read is a PDF. And so I can open up PDFs from my toolbar using the PDF allowed feature. And I've opened up one earlier, so I'll go into Adobe Reader. And there's some information here about elephants this time. So I can read just as I would in anything else. But this time, uh, with PDF Allowed, what's installed is a PDF Allowed toolbar within Adobe Reader. And so on the right-hand side, if I click on Extended, in versions 10 and 11, we'll see this extended option and then you can actually expand the PDF Allowed toolbar and use those options to read the information there. So I will click on play. In Sri Lanka, elephant orphans are getting second chances. The government's elephant trans... And we'll just stop that there. So you can see the text being read within the PDF. So that's a different format altogether. And another feature that we have is the ability to be able to read uh, text that's within a graphic. So that's not always available to students um, within various uh, text-to-speech programs. So with PDF, uh, with Text Help Read and Write Gold, on the toolbar we've got an option called Screenshot Reader. So as I click on that, what it means is I can now capture that text that's there um, on the graphic. So I highlight it or select it that and then what happens is it'll start to analyze that information the text that's there and you can see the screen analyzer progress comes up as a pop-up sometimes that can take a few moments just for it to try and um, read that text that's embedded there in the graphic and then once that's done it will read back that text final feedback to health Many orphans are returned to the wild by four years of age. And there we go. 
So that's uh, using uh, PDF allowed to be able to read PDF files. So another uh, option for students to access information again. So we've looked at some of the features of the reading toolbar. Now we're going to look at some writing tools. So let's change to the writing tools preset and click on the text help button. And now the first thing we might do is just write into the blank document and what we can do when we're writing is have speech support as we type and that's available in that play drop down menu. So I've currently got speak as I type selected and the options for that are in the speech options menu under the tab auto read. So because I've got speak as I type selected I've got options uh, for speaking each letter, each word or each sentence and I've got each word and sentence uh, checked. I like that usually but it will really depend on the individual and the preferences that work for them. So as I type I'll get a bit of feedback as to the words I've written, whether they sound okay, maybe um, whether there's some spelling errors there and also I'll get that whole sentence read back to me which also gives me that um, larger context of whether the words are working together. So let's type capital I made this mistake on poor pose. I made this mistake on poor pose. Okay, so as it's read back, I can kind of hear that it doesn't sound correct. I've also got the underlining. So one of the other features on the toolbar is the spell check. And I can either right click on the words or choose the feature in the actual toolbar. So as I right click, the spell check helper will come up and gives me a list of words that I can try. So if I wasn't sure, I could click on the words and use the play button to listen to them. Mistake. And I could also listen to the definition of those words. If I'm pretty sure I've got the right word there to change over to, I can choose change. And then I can go on to the next word. So I've right clicked on that. And we've got a variety here to listen to. So I know it's purpose and I'll change that one. So speech feedback and spell checker are two options that can support a student who's writing. We've also got word prediction. So that's available up on the toolbar with the little glass ball and the options for that are in the drop down. So if I go into prediction options, there's a few different things that I can change. Um, one of the things that's really useful is the colours. So if you've got someone with some visual impairment, you could make um, the text really large and also have uh, high contrast colours, so a black background perhaps. Let's just change that. Okay, and a yellow foreground. Okay, and then you've also got the columns and rows that you can arrange. So what that means is I've got a a list of words, one column, and then the rows is the number of words. So I've got five words that will show up. And then the word prediction behavior, uh, whether you want words displayed alphabetically, yep. One of the things I do like to make sure is checked is following the cursor during typing so that the window um, doesn't obscure where you're writing. And I also like the option for having the um, word inserted when I click on it. Another nice thing would be to have the word read as you hover over it with the mouse and that's available in the speech tab. So here I can choose to speak when the mouse pointer hovers over the word. So an individual who's writing and using the word prediction can um, just hover over the word and hear if that might be the one they want to use. And then they can click on it to choose it. Or use the function keys. Okay, there are some advanced options which if I tick on that will give you a few more tabs you can look through. Um, things like learning where as you type um, words are learned. Uh, you can look at some of the phonetics and 
add new ones so different phonetic combinations and how to replace or what to replace those with as student types if you know a student is particularly uh, a phonetic speller and does things um, consistently you could go in and alter those for them the context relates to how big uh, the word prediction vocabulary is and the word banks that it's using so you can actually add additional word banks and then you've got the edit list so you can also add in your own so come off advanced options and click on OK and then we're going to use that prediction now so I'll click on the little glass bulb and my prediction window comes up and then I should be able to start typing the that joke so as I'm writing or typing letters predictions coming up I could choose to use the function key or joke. click on the word joke and you could hear it speaking as I um, hovered over the word that he told me me made made me me laugh okay and so I've been spelling phonetically there and I can see the word laugh come up um, I can hover my mouse over those options laugh laughed laugh and when I know it's correct I can click to choose it laugh so that's the word prediction the joke that he told me made me laugh the other thing about this word prediction feature is that as you um, write things often the word prediction starts to um, learn how you type and so it'll start to predict words that you tend to put together frequently so I could type this sentence again the joke joke he told and you can start to see words appear told. a lot sooner in the list me made me made me laugh laugh the joke that he told me made me laugh the so, joke he told me made me laugh <laughs> so we heard that twice uh, it'd be good to know what the joke was wouldn't it so that's word prediction there is another option in addition to word prediction which is new in version 11 and that's called the word cloud which gives you a bank of words that relate to a particular topic and there's a number of word banks uh, word clouds that you can select so up in my toolbar you can see the word cloud icon if I choose the drop down and go into the word cloud options this is where I can change a few of the features of how it looks and um, one of the things I like to make sure I like the word cloud shape to be in a cloud or you could have it as a list of words you've got your color theme and then where the word cloud appears um, whether there's numbers included and less frequent words um, so let's say yes to that and you've got the option again of clicking to speak the word or clicking to insert the word so once we've got those options selected we can go and click on word cloud and what comes up is an option of a whole list of banks of words that we can choose from so we've been looking at volcanoes and elephants and I like we might go into the topic of earthquake vocabulary and then we do have an option of using our own text but let's use this existing bank and choose create and then that word bank will pop up uh, on the screen so what it acts as is a great support for students who might be either planning their writing uh, around a topic and it just gives them um, some visual prompts of words that they could use uh, and also they're there as a as a help for spelling and um, continuing their writing as well so here comes our word bank you can see um, the more common words are bigger and then the other uh, less less common words are smaller around the cloud and as I showed you in the options I could make that a list if I wanted to so I can start to write about earthquakes um, 
using that word bank word cloud. Earthquake R uh, on A. And I've got the word fault here. I could click on it. Fault. And as I click on it, it speaks it. I've also got the option in that op word cloud options to click on it and insert it into the, the text. Fault. Okay. Earthquakes are on a fault. All right, so that's some of the writing tool features. And we're going to now look at some of the study and research skill features. One of the first research or study skill features that I want to look at is the summarising text option. So what we can do is we can select text either from the web browser or perhaps within Microsoft Word and um, assign them different highlighted colours so that the student can then pull them together in a summary um, of those different highlights and uh, arrange their paper or, or writing around a particular topic. So I'll explain or show you how that looks. If we were doing our volcano, volcano topic, I might highlight some of the information that I've found. So let's arrange um, and give this first sentence a pink highlight and then we might give another sentence a green highlight. Obviously we'd think around why we might give them different highlights. So they might be around a different um, description or um, a breakup of the topic. So this next one I'm going to give a yellow highlight and then if we were to flick back to our Microsoft Word document we could continue to give those highlights a bit pink and if you could just imagine that the different highlights I'm assigning are for different reasons yellow and then all of those highlights that we've applied uh, within the web and within our document we can actually collect so I cl click on the collect icon and I can choose which colors I collect we didn't assign any blue we can then choose whether we order those highlights by color uh, or it could be collection time or position in the document so we'll go with color because technically that's by our uh, subcategory or areas that I wanted to arrange them by and then we're choosing to collect the highlights from different documents in Internet Explorer and Word and we've got an option for different bibliographic formats so we'll stick with APA and when I click on OK what happens is a document is created in Microsoft Word and now we can see all of those highlights across the web and the Word document have now been pulled into this one document uh, into their different highlighted areas. So it's a great tool for students who are reading across different um, platforms and then want to pull the information into uh, an arrangement that helps them to write about that particular topic. And then you can see we've got the bibliography at the bottom there. Now with those highlights we can also do another great thing which is if we go back to our volcano document and I'll clear those highlights and we'll also go back to our web browser and clear those highlights but this time I'm just going to select some different words and we're going to use those highlights to create a vocabulary list and that's a really great option um, for vocabulary revision or building vocab uh, for students who have English as a second language or students with more significant literacy challenges. So we're going to select words around um, volcanoes and things. So let's select volcano and we'll just give them all a blue highlight. So I want mudslide, volcano, avalanche from this uh, web browser and then I'm going to come across to my Volcano uh, Word document and I'll highlight Tsunami, give it a blue, and Earthquake, give it a blue. And so those five words now we're going to pull into a vocabulary list. And so I'll click on Vocabulary and you can see them listed now. And all I need to do is give that a bit of a title. So 
formations or something geographic geographic formations and I can choose to select images for that in, in the vocabulary list and I'll click on OK and that list will be pulled together and opened up in a new word document and that can be given to the student for revision or learning we'll just wait for that to come up shouldn't be too long and then we can see another application of using those highlight tools in the study toolbar just going to see if that's come up in a new document still thinking there we go so here's our vocabulary list and we've got volcano mudslide avalanche tsunami uh, and that's just been pulled from using those highlights. Another new feature for version 11 is the option for adding voice notes. So this can be useful as a student is writing, they can add little notes to remind themselves of things that they might need to do later down the track or to remember to study. And so I'm going to add this into the research study uh, tool section because we've been studying and looking at volcanoes and this particular text is going to be coming up in our test coming up uh, next week so I'm going to add a few voice notes in to remind myself of sections that I need to make sure I remember or study um, so just pop your cursor where you want to insert the voice note and then click on the voice note icon in your toolbar it brings up a little microphone detection and you can start recording this section on the definition of a volcano will come up in our test next week must remember this so once I've recorded my little message that I want to insert as a voice note I can insert that uh, also would save that to my computer so let's click on insert and then if I close voice note I can play that back just by double clicking in the document and it opens it up as a WAV file this section on the definition of a volcano will come up in our test next week must remember this okay so that's how you can add voice notes and that's a great new feature that um, is available in version 11 so we've just had a good look at some of the new features of Text Help Read and Write Gold version 11. Some of those new features being the toolbar style and colour that you change to the 13 different colours and a few different styles for the look. We also looked at Word Cloud, which had a number of word banks that we could add in when a student is writing. And then we looked at Voice Note, which is a great study uh, research tool feature. There are also a whole range of enhancements that we've gone through. Um, in particular, some of those are the support for Chrome and Google Docs and being able to use text-to-speech and the picture dictionaries and writing options within Google Docs. Also, the nuance vocalizer voices and the ability to watch those video tours um, to refresh your memory on the different features uh, by um, clicking on those and seeing those open up in a browser in full screen. So I hope that you've gained a lot from looking at this webinar on version 11 and we'd be more than happy to uh, be contacted for support. This is our Spectronics consultancy team of Greg O'Connor, Amanda Hartman, Katie Lyon and myself and we're available uh, by mail or phone contact if you do have questions about text help or any other products. Uh, the consultancy services that we're able to provide, we can um, provide packages for coming out on site and doing hands-on type workshops. There's also a lot of online services that we're able to provide. So if you contact us and, and give us an idea of the things that you're interested in training about, we can certainly look at a, a package that might suit you. Don't forget that we've got our Inclusive Learning Technologies Conference coming up in 2014 and there's going to be a fantastic range of speakers coming along for that. I'm really looking forward to, uh, in particular, uh, hearing from a range of our great keynote speakers who are now confirmed. 
Uh, we've got Kevin Honeycutt, Carol Zangari, David Eddyburn, Jason Carroll, Jason Gibson and Greg O'Connor who will be speaking and I'm sure there will be fantastic topics and information that they'll be bringing to us. I hope you found this webinar useful and look for more of these topics online uh, on our website. Thank you.